Welcome into the Command Center Podcast. I'm Logan Paulson here with Santana Moss it is I. and Fred Smoot. I'm and the Cupid. <laughs> Lord, I come to spread love. It is. It's Valentine's I Day. I come to spread love. That's now, I don't really like the holiday because I think it's about commerce. I mean, obviously. And yeah. if you love your mate, Hold I should on. love you the 364 other days, right? Mm-hmm. Not love just one day to mates. show my love. So I am, you know, I'm with it. I play along. <laughs> but I don't, I don't think I, it's one of the holidays that I, I I really get involved in. No chocolate or balloons or teddy Nothing bears for, for me. But I think all the holidays are about commerce. It's a, it's, it's about money. So well, all, well, I think it's a couple of days can, in there. You can celebrate whatever day, but I'm yeah. thinking, think about it. The way they set up these things, it's about them making some kind oh, of Oh, it's about, about making money. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. I mean, Easter's that way. Same thing. Yeah. You didn't just put Easter in the money making Dude, business. think about, yeah. are there any rabbits? At, at when that have chocolate eggs? Yeah. When you're like, <laughs> first of all, you're like, where did that come just from? Just think about when you were, it's Christmas time and they already putting up hearts in the grocery store talking about Valentine's Day and around the corner. Like, uh, the the next Commerce Day. Well, <laughs> you, got new, you got New Year's after that is a Commerce Day. Yeah. But then you got the 4th of July. I don't think that's Commerce. I think that's more about bringing people together. Yeah. Like Memorial Day. Fire, that's more, fire, it's still fire. money being spent. Yeah. It's money being spent. You buying food. You but buying... not like your birthday. No. Not like the other days. Yeah. Um, also, I want to ask you something real quick. Because yeah. Tana was talking about this. And I think this is, I know we're getting a little sidetracked, Jason. That's my bad. But I got to ask this question. Yeah, ask it. We were talking about the Hall of Fame thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You guys were talking about Devin Hester. Yeah. yeah. Tana, I want to get your thoughts on the Devin Hester thing. Because it's it's really insightful. Yeah. I was all I was all for it. One, you know, University That's of your Miami. Guy, right? Yeah. University of Miami. Connections there. And I was like, you know, or sooner or later he's gonna be a Hall of Famer, just the numbers wise, but I didn't look into the numbers. Yeah. And it was a friend of mine that just was kinda like pissed about other guys. Yeah. yeah. And and he asked me weeks ago about some of the guys, special teams wise, who I thought should be in the Hall of Fame. And I'll, you know, I always bring up B yeah, Mitch. B. Mitch. Yeah. And he say, okay, Tanner, you like B. Mitch, and this particular guy likes B. Mitch. Now go look up B. Mitch's numbers. And I looked up those numbers, and I was like, oh. They're not even comparable. Well, so, like, what, yeah, what is incomparable? Because I think well, like, everyone, Mitch, everyone knows. Everyone B. Knows Mitch is second to Jerry Rice in just all purpose. Yards. All, all purpose. That's, all purpose. That yeah. is a <laughs> that's crazy. crazy. But when you look at it, B. Mitch has like 19,000 yards, oh. and then like everybody else is like just – they never. It's never gonna be six hundred. It's never gonna 500. be broken. Put it like that. Yeah, really. But just to get back to the Devin Hester thing, look, I'm one of those guys. When you do what you do, yeah. you deserve to be. You know, you deserve yeah. to have. Yeah. And he that. was like, he was like a phenomenon. In the yeah, yeah, he was. But the thing I would say about it, just knowing that, yes, he's in there now. It's it it's opened the doors for a lot of other guys to now have the opportunity because. It's a numbers game. We've been heard that it's for a long time. It's a numbers game. You talk about receiving, talk about DB, talk about tight, whatever position it is. But one of the things that stood out to me just how many other guys have more numbers. Yeah, Devin was beating everybody in touchdowns. touchdowns. Yeah, and when you look up the numbers, he's nowhere near a lot of. The, it's about 10, 15 Sproles, guys. Josh Sproles, Josh Creel, a lot of guys oh, in terms of yards. Yeah, yeah. yards. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. what I meant to say. Yards. So. I'm all for it. You and we in the house. We in there. Yeah. But when you really look at the thing, it's going to be a lot of guys yeah. now. Yeah. Like talking you, that talk. You were talking about like Cordell Patterson. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, a lot of guys. Like I just, I was blown away to hear the numbers from other guys. Like Cordell Patterson has ten kick returns for touchdowns, six of them over hundred yards. Like that's ridiculous. Like yeah. that is hard to do. Yeah. yeah, you understand. And Devin Hester had more collective Touch touchdowns. Yeah, but when it came it. to yards. Everybody else was in front of him. So yeah. I was like, wow. So and if he's in there. I think they had taken into account a lot of people kicked away from him. Yeah. Especially in this But I peak. said that. That's the first thing I said. Yeah. I said, yeah, but you got to think. And that's more punt return wise. Yeah. yeah. But I said, too, I think the excitement of how he did things yeah. uh, kind of gave him a nod. And what we talked about, it's a notoriety type of thing, too. So popularity contest. So if Super a guy Bowl. who's there yeah. speak about me and yeah. I did it in the biggest game, yeah. then that gives me more of a nod. But then we go back to the Star Wars. Yeah. And Lynn Swan. Lynn yeah. Star, Star Work led the league, uh, led the team in receiving yards every year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And had more yards than Lynn Swan. Yeah. That's but crazy. Lynn Swan went in there yeah. way before Star Work. And, and, so, beat, and beat him with the big plays. Yeah. And so, that's what it but was. But it was always in the Super Bowl game. Yeah. So. yeah. And we're right. talking about Devin Hester, but I, I really wanted to talk about, you know, because I think that, that was really interesting yeah. when you were talking about that. Ooh, bring the elephant in the room up. Yeah. What about our guy, London? And First yeah. of all, Willis. Pat Willis, Mississippi. Oh, meant the old Miss. High character guy, yeah. one of the best Bull- linebackers of his generation. Bulldog. All right, no, he's a, he's an Ole Miss Rebel. Oh Miss, sorry, uh, I, Ole Miss. I yeah, think yeah. sorry, yep, yeah. Ole Miss. But this dude should not 
be in there before London Fletcher. And this is where I think is all wrong. It kind of goes back to the how, how can, image thing, too. How yeah. can these sports writers vote on Hall of Fame? Why not Hall of Famers yeah. vote on Hall of Fame? Because I know old Hall of Famers would not leave B. Mitch and London Fletcher. Yeah. They got too much respect for London and, played double the time, yeah. won a Super Bowl, and did all the... His numbers compared to Ray Lewis. Yeah. What do... Ray Lewis. I just said B. Mitch numbers compared to Jerry Rice. <laughs> yeah. What... What are you thinking? But that just shows you, too, it's like one of the things that we say. It's a popularity thing. And then it goes back to what Dion alluded to. If you're going to put guys in there that, yeah, who deserve to be there, then the guys who more than deserve to be there needs to be on different layers. It needs yeah, to be yeah, different tiers. Yeah. It shouldn't so be the Hall of Good. It shouldn't be just like, everybody, we made it. Yeah. It should be like, nah, this is first first team Hall of Fame. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Now yeah. you have to break it up in layers. And I think when it's getting to the point to where now, it seems like it's a free-for-all now. Yeah. Everyone is getting numbers. You oh, know what I mean? No, so, if you a so fantasy you darling, if you a fantasy football darling, yeah. you're getting in the Hall of Fame yeah. right now. Yeah, and I think like the, the thing about like, the one thing I will say about Devin Hester and Patrick Willis is Patrick Willis was like, the linebacker of his era. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Hester was like, his ret- his return percentage for touchdown was yeah. like crazy. It was ridiculous. It was yeah. ridiculous. So, yeah. I mean, there was a little bit different element there, but yeah. I think you guys bring up great points. Like the consistency that Fletcher played with, the consistency that B. Mitch played with, like yeah. there's, got, there's value And there. they got championship and rings. They, you can't yeah. say they don't get them. And then B. Mitch was a guy that was used heavily in the offense yeah. like, and was making plays in the offense. He just wasn't back there it, coming in. And he him, was coming in on third down him, making plays. So. Him, Dave Meggett, and Eric Metcalf started the third down back. Yeah. Mm. All right, so yeah, did you leave your touch on the game? Yes, yeah. I did by the return game, yeah. by the third down back, and catching the ball out the backfield. Yeah. So yes, they did. Yeah, I just I think it just raised the eyebrow, and I know we don't want to get too far with this. Jason probably gonna be over there. You know, <laughs> you know, angry Jason to come out, but, but, but we, no, just, we gotta tell the it, truth. It's just man. one of those things that, like I said, when I heard the name. So up to you, my boy. Anyway. Yeah. But then when I looked at numbers, I'm like, oh, oh different. What's the rhyme and reason? Yeah. Oh, they gonna open the door for a lot now. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. And so, uh, just a reminder, we're brought to you by Bet Three Six Five. We are at Bet Three Six Five. We don't do ordinary. We believe every sport should be epic. Right now, yeah. new customers can choose between two offers when they open an account at Bet Three Six Five. Use the QR code to sign up, deposit ten, and choose between either. First bet safety net offer by placing a bet up to 1000 and if your qualifying bet loses, you receive a match refund and bonus bets, or bet and get offer, bless you, Jason, and place a bet of $5 or more and get 150 in bonus bets. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365, official sports betting partner of the Washington Commanders. Must be 21 plus, physically located in Virginia. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and won't help, Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Call Fred. You know, no. <laughs> yeah, call me. You know, I'm just chilling at home. What's wrong, man? I got a gambling problem. I'm coming to get you. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to throw that joke some <laughs> <play. laughs> Three in a book. <laughs> All right. So, obviously, uh, Hall of Fame was a big thing. We, we kind of yeah. talked about that real quick. But yeah. the other big thing, man, was the Super Bowl game. Yeah. Ah. And oh, it was I'm just going to open it up to, like, high-level thoughts to start. Tanner, do you want to start this yeah, off? Yeah, you can start it off. Yeah, I'd love to start it off. It was a good game. Yeah, good game. It's everything but, you asked for. But it was a point in the game, and I leaned over to whoever was next to me having their spirit. I was like, I'm loving this right now, but San Fran has to score. Yeah. Because you this still a one-possession game. And with the other guy who was at quarterback, knowing him, I say, man, the second half, he gonna, they going to they gonna get together. Defensively yeah. and yeah. offense, they going to get this thing together. Nah, San Fran might. has to hear up and score. Yeah. This finish, it, gonna, it might get ugly in the second half. And, Lord, I didn't know it was going to come by somebody – Muffing a, a punt on a foot, their yeah. foot hitting. That probably hurt you a little bit. T- yeah. To me, I think that was just like that was the backbreaker. It was the it was like there it is yep. right there. Yeah, we've been waiting on that one play. It was the next play they scored, and I'm yeah. like, there it is right because there. Because they went three and out. Yeah, and when they punted that ball, it was ten to turn the game around. Yeah. and and that's what that's that's Patrick Mahomes is one of those lethal weapons where. It doesn't matter what the situation mm-hmm. holds. If he's your quarterback and I'm on his team, I don't think it's no point that I think we out the game. Like, when they let him on the field for that last drive, like, <laughs> hey, stupid. I want to I wanna play, my, I wanna play my message I sent to my group chat. 
Can, can, can I play it on here? Is it? Okay. No, I don't know about you. you, you yeah, yeah. I'm, it, 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 he might have to. I was say I don't know what you. you know I, just, I didn't want to play it, bro, because it would it bothered me because I was rooting for 49ers. Yeah, but I also yeah. told yeah, those guys y'all shut ahead. I won't be yeah. mad. And then, I won't, I, then we then we had to choose, and I chose the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, was funny. I right again? It's after we talked. I was talking to people, and I was like, I want San Fran to win, but I can't like in good conscience pick against Patrick Mahomes because he's. He's, like, such a unique yeah. player, man. Like, his ability to elevate that offense. Like, usually you see, like, it's it's such an interesting, like, thought experiment. San Francisco's off offense elevates Brock Purdy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mahomes elevates Kansas City's offense. Everything he does, right? When you watch, like, and it's, he does it in a different way yeah. than, like, the Mannings and the Brady's. Uh, such Lamar, unique, he does it different than all. Yeah. He waddled through there for 25 yeah. yards. And I said, it's over with. Is it ready, Tanner? You got it? It's ready. Jason, you know, do what you do after this. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. I'm just letting you know. Just do what you do <laughs> when you hear it because it might be a little. Hey, I, man, I don't know. I, I, I forgot what I said, but this is how I feel after the game was over because I just was in disbelief. Like, wow. Uh -huh. Man, they keep, them, them keep Andy Reid and Mahomes together. And then, it don't matter who the else they got on their team. <laughs> <laughs> what they they record is during the regular season. If they get to that game right there, this dude, this, this dude, <laughs> he the <laughs> win, bro. This dude knew, bro. You know what? Let me let me speak on this. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You look, you sound like you hurt. <laughs> I get what you say. <laughs> <laughs> it cut off because the fog got up, bro. It, it might not make it, but because <laughs> it was too but, much. But it, it, it was too much. Your first grade. It was too much for Jason to probably beep out. But <laughs> just to just to just to kind of chime in, give y'all a little bit of what I was saying. Basically, what I was saying was, bro, I never seen anything like Andy Reid and Pat Mahomes together. We no. talk about Belichick and Brady. That it, it was special with those guys because yeah. you saw. Just Belichick, how his teams responded as to, a whole. To every situation. Bro, don't get me wrong. That Kansas City defense has matured in the last yeah, few years. Oh, they look, they, they one of the best defenses bro, in football. It was key plays that you can point out that this won the game for them. No, this play won the game defensively. Yeah. This play won the game. This play won Defensive the game. Defensive backs locked down. But what I yeah. wanted to say about Andy Reid and Pat Mahomes, one, Pat took over that game. He showed what Cam – been talking about when it comes to being special at the quarterback position and being, being a game a, man, being a game, being a game manager or yep. or, or a playmaker or a game yep. changer. Because Mahomes did that. He said, "On fourth and or third and short or fourth and short, if it's not there, I'm running. And yeah, yep. I'm taking off." And he did it. And he did it time and time again. He showed you that I got this game in my hands. Like it's not hard. It ain't. Up I can. To you, I can make the decision when or when not to be the guy. And yep. he he showed that, especially that last drive. But the reason why I brought that up, because we talk about, too, we see so many offenses struggle trying to find the right play yeah. to yeah. move the ball. And Andy Reid just come up with the same stuff. Uh, no, Andy Reid, he, he know what, we don't run do. what we ran. We ran four weeks ago. Dude. When he, he just know how to do it, when it's time to do it. Yeah. But it's crazy, like, because we, we talked about this on uh, Ticket to the Draft podcast. You were on there, right? Yeah, we yeah. talked about the quarterbacks and just how you need a player yeah. that – elevates you yeah like it makes it so much easier because when you watch kansas city's offense it's not like every it, play is it's not up just, perfect they're not whooping you with your pen all the time yeah. they do a good job but it's yeah. like it, it it's him yeah he's the guy man he's the playmaker and so yeah for me it's like is he the goat it kind of feels like he's well on his way. You know yeah, what I'm saying? If it tastes like goat milk, it's probably goat milk. Goat you know? He's on his way. He's on his way. He drinks goat milk. We can talk about this all day, but he's on his way. Yeah, no, yeah. he's on his way. And I knew the game was over when Jermaine Dupree walked out there with them socks. Oh, on. get out <laughs> when, when, when he had <laughs> on, When he had on them yo hun, <laughs> I knew it was. Yo, I say, this is Kansas City game <laughs> to win right there. And I hate to rub it in because I know y'all are Shanahan Knights. Yeah. I know y'all well, are was, Shanahan Knights to the day. I was, I was but fun, yet man. again, <laughs> y'all boy was. Yet so close, yeah. but yet That's so what, far away. That what hurts right there. Let's talk about that a little bit. <laughs> so overtime, so oh, the overtime thing, right? Overtime rules for the Super Bowl. Yes. A little bit different than the regular season. Yeah. 
What did you think about his decision to take the football to start it off? I wasn't mad at him. I wasn't mad at that either. Can I say I didn't know the rules either? Yeah. I mean, I knew I, played the, football I knew they had changed them a long time. They changed them after the Kansas City game. The Buffalo game. I didn't yeah. know. Mm-hmm. I didn't, and I guess too because I've been away from the game for like nine yeah. years, playing wise. Yeah. But I even watching it, I didn't, I didn't know that it was yeah. different rules in the postseason I, 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 and the Super Bowl. I knew it for all time. T- I mean, uh, Tony Romo and them start to talk about it mm-hmm. during the what's the name during the Super Bowl. Like, hey, the rules are not the same. It's so funny because I, for whatever reason, on the TV I was watching on, it was in Spanish the whole time, so I didn't get that that element. So I'm like, what are the rules? Like, are they changed? <laughs> where would you at? I was I was just watching on normal cable, and my father in law has the settings where it's like it only does the Spanish broadcast. You had a flow mod of TV. The commercials are in English. <laughs> the game is in Spanish. My God! <laughs> and then sometimes the sideline report is in English. So obviously, I don't understand. Would you watch the game at Taco Bell? No, I was at this I was house, <laughs> and I was like, what are we watching? So, so. And we couldn't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole time it's just like you know it's just this so you basically watch Usher sing in Spanish no but that, that, that that's in English <laughs> so I didn't get the rules so I'm trying to figure it out as I'm watching I'm looking on my phone I couldn't figure it out but okay let's talk about it so the thing that I want to say about the Kyle Shanahan thing is if you take the ball first I think you need to have the urgency to score a touchdown mm. regardless mm. because your guy, Patrick Mahomes, is, is, is still there. But he's going to score a touchdown. But I, that's. No, so, and, and I, I want to, I want to yeah, talk about it. Yeah, I want to yeah. talk about it. I want to get your thoughts. I was going to yeah, okay. say, I feel you on that, but then who's to say, don't score the three points? Don't go. If you feel you like. Gotta man, score, you got to score. So at the end of the day, who's to say our defense is not going to just be on one and yeah. stop them? You saw, because yeah. they, they basically had him, had him in the wraps a couple of times, and yeah. he did what he do best. Yeah. I'm going to take off. But I think the other thing that gives you is like, by so they, they interviewed both coaches, yeah. and Andy Reid's thought was, we're going to get the ball second, we're going to go down, we're going to score a touchdown, and we're going to go for two. Yeah. The thing that if you score a field goal, mm-hmm. and I know I need a touchdown, I'm going for every fourth down. You're going for every fourth down. Every I'm going for every but Cal, well, but Cal to Cal um, credit credit. He 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 was re, he he expected them to score. And he thought and he, he was going to get it the third. And, time. and he know the third time that's yeah. the sudden death rule. Yeah, yeah 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 yeah. So I mean, uh, look, bro. I, at the end of the day, <sighs> damn if you do, damn if you don't. There yeah. we go. Yeah, I looked at him. I mean, the man, they played a phenomenal game, they, and that's the thing. And I'm like, bro, like, who's to say they was going to score? Who's to say that them three points weren't going to be all they needed? But it was just one of those games to where Mahomes just put himself on that ghost that is like, here go, yeah. y'all want to see MJ? Yeah. Finish show him. <laughs> yeah. Finish show you MJ. That's how MJ take over games. Yeah. Football, football stuff. Jason the Jag, did I not <laughs> say that the score was going to be twenty? To sell no, he said it was going to win by a field goal. He said it was going to be no, a field goal game. I called but it. I called it. I, the numbers that I called, I was so yeah. close. Mine was 17-28. So I know I was winning. If you guys off. listen to the Super Bowl predictions, go back and check that out. Leave it in the comments. We're fact-checking Fred, so thank you for helping us. Yeah, we 2017. Never know, we never know if Fred's telling 2017, the 2017, Kansas City is what I see. Yeah, you said something similar to that. I, I'm, I'm not sure what it was, but I know we was going for... San Fran. Uh, San Fran, mm-hmm. and he said it's going to be a field goal game with, you know, San Fran. And I was like 28, 17, you know, yeah, he thought it was yeah. San Fran. But, it, bro, it was one of the games that I can say I truly enjoyed. I, was, I enjoyed watching Most every bit of it. viewed Super Bowl of all time. They yeah. say plus 7%. They say Taylor 6% Swift. are Swifties. How y'all feel about that? I love it, man. I, like, I saw something on Instagram the other day that I thought, was, Maria. That I thought was great. Mm-hmm. It was this little girl. She's probably... 11, 12 years old. She's watching the game, and the dad's like, you know what a tight end is? He's like, oh, yeah. Like, where does the tight end let up? She knows what's holding. She knows. She's like, uh, she's like, oh, that's a holding. She's like, in invest, and it's a whole generation of people, a whole demographic of people yeah. that are getting a share in this game that we love. And, bec- yeah. and it, I don't, if because of Taylor Swift, yeah. great. Bring more people to the party because I love football. I think it's awesome. So it doesn't bother me at all. Yeah. Hey, listen, I loved when my guy – Kissed her and swung her around in slow motion <laughs> as the confetti. You were hoping in the ring oh, came listen. out. You were waiting. I, I, wait. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. I said, "Is he that leaf finna go down?" <laughs> <laughs> you were waiting for it. Tell me, you know, right, I, I was in there like this. Here it go. It look like, it look like, I don't know. Like, all I'm saying is, I enjoy. It. I don't care why you came to the game. Yeah. I'm just happy you did. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't tripping on. That you know, part was in Spanish for me, the, by the, the way. The Swifties <laughs> and who, who brought what. I just say, look, at the end of the day, man, it's one of those games that you want to be able to share that kind of atmosphere or that that entertainment yeah. with your family. But it's a Super Bowl. And then yeah. not only that, 
when you have man, hats off to Jay Z or whoever's you know a part of getting those halftime shows to be what they are yeah. now. Yeah. Because man, I, I never anticipated halftime shows the way I'm doing now. Well, yeah, well, you know the both. history of the halftime show. No, we, we it started about the with the color, color whole thing. It started yeah, with the, so we got to think Keeman and Adam Wayne for this <laughs> because they the comedy show, yeah. sketch show, yeah. did a Super Bowl show, and 30 million people went to watch it. Oh, and, really? Yeah. And the Super Bowl was like, yeah, we need I to do our own too. show, oh. and that's how the show. But started. I'm just talking about far as even <laughs> if you think about when they started because we can yeah. we can we can go back to Michael Jackson, the print, all those yeah. guys. The who just feel we like had some terrible the era of now. You know this this era we in now with Jay Z being a part of it. It yeah. seemed like he's picking the right people to yeah. kind of go out there. Like, you know, Rihanna, she she was great last year. Yep, yep. But a, just, little, a little low energy yeah, for Lil Yachty because she was pregnant. Usher, I mean, Dr. Dre two years ago <laughs> yeah. was, was, was yeah. fabulous. Yeah. Like, but Usher just Usher was out there sweating like man, Patrick Ewing. Usher had sweating me like, like well, you, I, gotta, <laughs> like I, gotta go, I wanna go watch an Usher concert now because of no, the he, he put I on said, the show. The first thing came to my head when he started skating, I said, Tanner probably at home. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hey, Tanner, 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 Tanner,
six guys because we only have 45 only 45 guys on the roster mm -hmm. right yeah. of last year's roster 26 of those guys are free agents right yeah. so that number is going to come Ooh. down a little right drastic half a team you drastic. get to make a whole team Ooh. drastic yeah. you get to make a whole team that's yeah. right so we got a lot of people that need to come back so i've heard a lot of fans jason's dad was telling me this the other day you yeah. got to get after it got to sign everybody sign the, all the best free agents yeah so i just went online last night because i'm a nerd you yeah. know it was like 11 o'clock i almost texted yeah. i almost texted fred yeah. fred what you doing but i did it because fred was going to make fun of me so i didn't do that so i texted jason and said but basically what i did is i went through and i re-signed all the free agents yeah. On our team. All the all 26 guys. Like, just re them to rosters. So, like, right. so Cam, Cam Curl. Curl. Yeah, his $14.7 million contract was what they online and kind of anticipated he was going to get. All right, all right. Kendall Fuller was about 14 or 13.9, right? Mm -hmm. Went through. And then I assigned basically, like, $2 million value for, like, Cody Barton. Yeah, just because yeah, you yeah. need that linebacker. Did you sign him for just the year? Money. So or that's that's sign? that's the annual value of the contract. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Not so, worried about the other. Not worried about the other. Yeah. Years. So, for, about so for Cam year. as an example, he's probably going to sign something in the realm of like it'll be like fifty. Four years, yeah, four years, four years, 50, 50 million. million. Something yep, like yep, that, right, yep, approximately. Yep. So I just went down and did that. And I was trying to try to be conservative. And then yep. for the defensive end spot, I said, Genevieve Clown County signed for seven and a half million last year. We, if we get a guy like that, yep. kind of veteran, as a veteran yeah. stop gap, that'd yep, be great. Yep. Hassan just, Reddick, maybe. J yeah, so I even yep. did that. Hassan, yep. But Hassan Reddick's cap number, is anticipated cap number next year, is $60 million. Mm. So just so I was really conservative to start. The number that I came out with, do you want to guess what it was? Mm, tell me. Hundred and seven million dollars. So you over the cap, over the cap, just re-signing the guys that we had. Now there's rules here, so let me just explain one really important rule. There's the fifty-one man rule in a salary cap, and basically it takes your fifty-one top salaries, and those are the only numbers that count against the cap. Yeah, right. So for example, like if we've had ninety guys on the roster, mm -hmm. those bottom forty guys, 40, yeah, don't or thirty-nine guys, yeah, don't count. Yeah. Mm. So so this you, training camp where yeah, yeah yeah so but again so if I sign somebody to a $10 million deal yeah. and I bump out a $2 million deal, that $2 million deal doesn't count against the cap. So I didn't yeah. do that. Yeah. Okay. Right. And they have other rules where you can get so like, I mean, you have, you have wiggle room. Then. Yeah. Wiggle room. But there's also guys that are like veteran exempt contracts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Where it's like, I'm signing a veteran contract, but it's, it's not going to count against this cap. Correct. Mm -hmm. So there are ways around some of that stuff. Yeah. But I just want fans to hear that, that yeah. if we just resign the guys that aren't on the team, it's a whole and lot of money. We it's a do. lot of money. I want the fan to think about it like this. Uncle Sam just gave you $100. How much do you owe Uncle Sam? <laughs> right? So you ain't really got $100. You understand that. Yeah, you yeah. stay in Northern Virginia, you got $60. <laughs> like, you understand where you at. Yeah, so obviously we can re-sign. You know, I, I think the, the big contracts were Curtis Samuel was $11 million. Yeah. Uh, Kendall Fuller, Fuller was 14 And Cam, Cam Curl, Curl was 14 So there, there's moves and money to be allocated the big veteran players, right? Mm -hmm. But it's just about where you want to allocate that money. So for me, I'll ask you guys this. Yeah. How do we effectively allocate this cap money? Like, what's the goal? Obviously, we got to resign the depth. Yeah. But after that, where are we thinking we want to put put those resources? I want to ask you a question, though, too, because yeah. this is something that I've been pondering. And ever since we was going to bring this up, I was thinking about it the other day. And I'm going to ask you because I feel like you, you have a, a lot of knowledge on it. If I sign one of those guys, the Kendall Fullers, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, let's say, you know, f uh, um, let's say Curtis Samuel for the 11 yeah. million. And I'm asking this because I feel like this was done to me a couple of times. Yeah. If if my cap hit is worth 11 million, but I'm not giving him that whole 11 that first year, does it They're still They're giving count? me seven. They're giving me seven. So, they push some of that on the back end. Yeah, one still is, count it's hard. Well, million. the thing about it is that seven become hard cap. The rest become salary. Yeah, so, that, so that's the thing. So, is, but I'm asking, does it does it affect my cap? So this is the yearly number. So basically, what this number would include is like signing bonus. Mm -hmm. So like, yours, let's say, um, let's just take an easy number. So your signing your signing bonus is ten million dollars. Yeah, your base salary is two. Mm -hmm. Okay, the total value of that contract for two years is. What is that? Fourteen million dollars. Fourteen million. Over the two years, the signing bonus you would get that this next year in twenty twenty four, right? Yeah. But it gets prorated over the life of the deal. So basically, they give you the way the team bills it mm -hmm. is five million twenty twenty four, yeah. five million twenty twenty five. Yeah. So in addition to this effective cap space number and money that we need to allocate somewhere, mm -hmm. we have dead cap, yeah. right? Which comes from contracts that are no longer on the books, but mm -hmm. we're still paying salary cap to those guys they're uh, still still paying signing bonus for those guys does that okay. make sense yeah yep. so that's how they they prorate the deal so you see like and the other thing they could do in terms of restructuring the cap is let's say we've got deron Payne, mm -hmm. right 
we give him a signing bonus. <coughs> we extend the length of his deal. Yep. And all of a sudden, his number, number per goes year way down. Down. goes down. way down. Yeah. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we have more effective capital. So I understand yeah. all that. But I was asking, the reason why I brought that up, because this happened to me a couple of times, well, it, well, particularly here, when I first yeah. got here. Mm -hmm. My sign-up bonus was like, you know, okay, you don't want that now. My agent, no, you don't want that. He's now. like, bro, you don't want all that money now because that's gonna be a bigger hit for you too and for the team. So we're gonna push a lot of this through over the year yeah. Yeah. of your contract. Mm -hmm. So what I was asking Sorry. because I didn't look at it then. Yeah. Does it affect the cap? It does affect the cap, yeah. but it, okay. but it, but it can affect differently. So let's say for example, so so if that number was pushed and made me get less up front. Do I still get hit for the? Do we still look at that as eleven million, or we look at it no, as we look, what we giving that three no, or that no. two? Whatever that, that solid check is that year, that's like, all okay. that matters. Bingo. So that, that answers my question. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's not going to be that unless it's million. they can uh, defer it. It's it's pro, it's prorated. It's yeah, not yeah, deferred. Pro, it's yeah. prorated, right? So like, let's say you got a the ten million dollars, right? You yeah. Got the ten million dollar check, you would get that deferred over a year. And so what they some people do is they get their salary backloaded. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, to help the team out because yeah. that yeah. again that affects. So, I think who did that? John Allen did that, yeah, right? Did it, yes. did it you probably did it too. Yeah. You, yeah. Your backloaded contract, you still get signing bonus the same amount over mm -hmm. the course of the deal, over the course but of the your deal. salary is higher, yeah. in the back end because you're yeah, so you're, you're getting a salary, you're getting that signing bonus with your salary, and correct. it's guaranteed because yeah. they didn't push the and back, and correct? Yeah. So, that's one way to do it. But so, in terms of resources here, understanding yeah. that kind of really complicated landscape, mm -hmm. positions you guys think we need to identify, yeah. In this draft, in free agency, in in in, in, in free agency, mm -hmm. and then how does that affect the draft? Bacon, bacon. Uh, I oh, want, I want bacon. big boys. I want three hundred pounders. <laughs> like, because uh, you got to ask yourself, free agents. What are you getting in the free agents? I'm getting somebody that I already know what they bring into the table. Yeah. I'm getting somebody. I'm getting you at the probably at the peak of your powers yeah. right now. And I'm getting you to solidify something. Yeah. Like, I, I don't go to free agents to get ifs. Yeah. I think that's where we've made mistakes at too much. Like, for, for instance, y'all brought it up. We re signed Curtis Samuel. Mm -hmm. I was then say no because I have two bigger, guys. You want a bigger receiver? I, I would say I would rather give Michael Pittman yeah. that money. Somebody, yeah, somebody. Michael Pittman bigger. Yeah. I'd rather get T. Higgins yeah. that money. Well, T. Higgins might get. Kind Too much money. money. Yeah, he might be. Yeah, he might be out of thing. Yeah, he, but offensive linemen <laughs> and defensive linemen ain't no ifs uh, 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 what with these guys. Yeah. You get what you pay for. Uh, you can get a Donovan Smith from Kansas City. You can get what, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You can find in free agents. But like they say, you don't want to spend all of your money in free agents because we do got that period after the draft where a lot of veterans get let go mm -hmm. post-draft yeah. and you can get them for better deals. So I'm one of those people. Give me big boys. Give me big boys because I think that's where we got to build this team at trenches well, first. Well, also, you're right. Well, also, you also can get guys that just going to solidify those different position groups. You know what I mean? Like, you know, not necessarily always big boys. You can get a corner yeah. or a safety. You can keep the safety that we have. Cam mm -hmm. Curl. Bring yeah. Cam Curl back. I think. But then bring in the Kyle Douglas then, from New or, England. Or, or bring in a Stephon Gilmore as corner, somebody yeah, yeah. who's a veteran. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to keep, you know, uh, your boy uh, but, uh, uh, Fuller. Fuller. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. stuff like that, I think it's great to put key guys, veteran guys in those positions too because now you're getting leaders for that core. Yeah. For, for that position group. You know what yeah. I mean? And then you can say, okay, I can get one or two guys, the bacon guys, you call it, yeah. offensive line, defensive, defensive line, line wise, yeah. and then I can build a draft out with a lot of the guys who has a higher ceiling yeah. who's going to probably be, be less, here a longer time. less expensive and be here longer. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. it's either or, however you want to do it, but like I feel like it's no rhyme or reason to it. I just feel like you got to know what you're getting and how you're trying to, wait, what you're trying to accomplish this year, yeah. Yeah. year one. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? With, with, with all this cap space, with yeah. all these, you know, this capital awarded to you, where, where are you trying to go with this team? Are you trying to say, okay, we already said we recalibrating. Yeah. Yeah. We're not trying to rebuild. So when we recalibrate, do we recalibrate with more veteran leadership in the mm -hmm. free agency? Or we go get those guys who younger, who's going to be able to play right now. now yeah. Yeah. You know, most yeah. of those guys coming in ready. So you want to know, can we go get one or two or three guys that we don't have to pay that much for that can play right now and change that whole position group? Well, well guess what? Everybody going to say pass rush. Yeah. Lost both our pass rushes. Yeah. Well, you got. Do we not have one or two guys already here? Well, well, you do got KJ Henry and guys like that. But you know, do we talk about a different defensive coordinator? Might got yeah. a different yeah. whole thing the yeah. way he do things. Bring we, might, we, yeah. we might go in from a uh, even front to an odd front. Yeah. That says everything. And then you got guys like like Josh Allen mm -hmm. from the Jag uh, Jaguars from the pass rush. Probably get franchise tag, but yeah. he is a free agent. Yeah, That's Brian right. Burns from yeah. Carolina, who they probably won't resign him because yeah. they they rock bottom. Right Clowney, now. Clowney yeah. guy you just talked about. Yeah, yeah. So you got, you got guys, yeah. Daniel yeah. Hunter. 
Yeah. All right, another guy. Like so, you got to ask yourself: How much do we allocate to the pass rush? How do how much do we allocate to protection? Yeah. Them are the two things: protection and pass rush is what I care about. And I right? think just based on Adam's history, Dan's history, you know, former D line coach, I think he does think there's a lot of value in defensive line. But just to kind of give some context about what you need, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, Curtis Samuel's a free agent, right? Mm -hmm. You need kind of a contributing third wide receiver. Yeah. This wide receiver class extremely deep. I can yeah. get right? one of those in the wide receiver. Right. I so maybe you don't need to maybe save some money there, right? You got Kendall Fuller. Start so you need a starting corner is starting what I'm corner. saying. Yeah. So maybe a guy develops from within, like you're saying. Yeah. Or you got. I think you probably got to go pay somebody. Yeah. In that, in that well, you still got St. Juice on the contract. You got yeah, your but, first rounder that you're a, trying to yeah. rehab last year. You need a veteran to lead those guys. Yeah, yeah. St. Juice ain't ready to lead those. No, guys. he's verbally not ready to yeah. lead, and so, that's why I think so, you got to so look bring for a fuller back, or you bringing a guy like I just spoke. Are about? you protecting with a great uh, uh, a new safety, uh, yeah. a safety from Buffalo mm -hmm. or something like that that you bring into a room to protect those corners? Yeah, and then you need a starting safety, and so. Kyle Duggar is a name that's out there. He's probably yeah. going to get about $15 Prior. million this yeah. year, right? A lot of money to be allocated yeah. there. It just seems like that's a weak thing in the draft class this year. Yeah. So, you know, Antonio Gibson, third down back. A lot of those guys in the draft class probably not going to pay that guy. Swing tackle, Cornelius Lucas. But then I think the other starters you need is you need two. You need a starting middle linebacker because Cody Barton's a free agent, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. So, does someone develop internally? I feel like you need to go get somebody. Or yeah. the draft. But drafting linebackers is tough because it takes them takes three them or four yeah. years to, to develop. To really get rolling. You need a head, but a wig splitter right yep. now. and then you need two two starting caliber defense events and yeah. I'm just saying the salary for one of those guys is going to be about $7 million so mm -hmm. you could draft an edge and maybe you sign one mm -hmm. right I think you try to resign both Casey and James I think that's important just for depth because yeah. think yep. about it you need about eight guys yeah to, to play that can you not go get a guy and luckily we got this working with us with the linebacker market it's not a market it's similar to the safety market where you're not just paying these guys 200 million dollars yeah. so so i can go if get you're the top of the class like what was that last year or two years ago where chicago paid the guy from buffalo no, yeah and it was like 80 million yeah it was a lot of money yeah, so yeah. if you're not the top guy to your point yeah but I think I can go. I can do a deal with a Patrick McQueen, mm. and that's a plug and play cha mm. a player that has played playoff ball that brings something to the who's, table. Who's the guy from uh, from uh, Tampa Bay? Devin White. That's, uh, Devin, Devin White. White. Yeah. So I looked up his number. We're looking yeah. at like ten and a half, eleven million dollars. It works. It's, just, it's it's a lot of money. Yeah. But again, like you got to take that from someplace else if you're you going to take pay that, that from Cody Barton, which he was giving him his two. Yes. Now right. I'm paying him eight. Yeah. That's a, that's a hell of an upgrade. And Cody was making three and a half last year. Just wait, to give wait, you some wait, context. Seven, so. Yeah. Six yeah. and a half. Yeah, yep, so yep. that's a good point. And also, so then you got depth pieces, backup quarterback, linebackers, you know, those types of guys that fill yep. out. Yep. Rookies would be perfect for that. And then you need a starting kicker. And the salary for a starting kicker is about $5 million. Lovely. So those are all things that are on the shopping list at the ah, moment. Kicker's a free agent, too? Yep, yep, yep. Kick yep. him in the eye, Joe Slash. So <laughs> I think there's, I think what I, what I come out of this exercise thinking about is you got to be smart. You got to say, where's the talent in free agency? Because we probably need some edge rusher depth. So we go go in there. Linebacker, I think it's a good spot yeah. because someone else has broken that guy in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Someone else is. Especially the two guys I want McQueen, yeah. Yeah. White. Yeah. Those are the guys. I think Queen, and I think Queen will be a little bit more than White because he was awesome this last year in yeah, Baltimore. Yeah, yeah, he I think was. he's probably in that twelve, thirteen million dollars a year range. But yeah. there, there's value there mm -hmm. to your defense, especially, you know, a guy like Dan Quinn who understands the value of linebacker. Uh, but then like receivers, running backs, pretty deep for the areas we need. So it's about allocating that that stuff there. Um, the other thing I want to ask you about is benefits of drafting a quarterback for the free agent market, for, for, for the salary cap. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you got years. Yeah. They're years, never right? really cheap. Yeah. Let's be honest. I mean, if you're drafting cheap, in the top three. They have, a, they have a cap. Yeah, yeah. They have Come a on. cap if you're drafting them. Uh, think about this, and I know y'all going to lose your mind. Mm -hmm. Dallas might have to pay Dak Prescott fifty five million a year. Do y'all yeah. understand that? Yeah, they know who he is. They know what he is. <laughs> but they tell you, still got to pay. It just uh, like a quarterback can't hold you hostage. Yeah, and, and because it's just not a lot. Listen, I have watched Kirk Cousins. He's my favorite account ever in the league. Yeah. <laughs> I have favorite watched, account. Yeah, listen, I have watched Kirk Cousins know his value, regardless of what anybody say to him. He understands his value. So getting a quarterback that you're probably going to play uh, five years, 50 million, right? With yeah, a rookie yeah, deal, yeah. top three. Yeah. Uh, you got him, and you get to see, is he your guy for the future? Mm -hmm. And he allows you to overpay a, a number one receiver like we have with Terry. Mm -hmm. He allows you to get a tight end if that's yeah. what you need. He allows you to find protection for him and get pieces around him before you have to pay him. Yeah, this is something we talked about on the Ticket to the Draft podcast, basically yeah. saying that the best player in the draft, best evaluation is Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah. Would you take him 
over a quarterback because he could. But for yeah. me, the answer is probably not. Yeah. Again, the impact if of you a nail. Have that quarterback in in place already. Yeah, on, you would on right. The team, yeah. But I'm saying like the the value of to Fred's point, the value of getting a quarterback on a rookie deal for five years is way more valuable than a receiver. Than, than a receiver, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Because it allows you like look what I think San Fran. You were you mentioned this I think right or Tanner is the best team right was San. No, no, Fran we was, were talking about it earlier. Yeah, yeah the yeah, best team. Was San Fran. Was San Fran. The best players was San Fran. Yeah. The best team, the best team. was Kansas City because they had the best player. Okay. And the reason they're able to do that is because they got a quarterback on a rookie deal. Yeah. Yep. They yep. can go out and sign the Hargraves. They, they, can, they sign, can sign everybody. Right. Yeah. And I think that's something that you look at and you say, oh, all right. That's a good way to kind of build the team, build the roster. Um, last question real quick. Any free agents specifically you'd like to see? You mentioned the linebackers, Tan. Any receivers yeah. you'd like to see? Any running backs? Any uh, Anybody you're like, man, this name? You know, y'all talk to me about offense, and I'm always looking at the opposite side. Yeah. yeah I, right. I want that veteran corner. I yeah, mean, that's if we're not going to bring fullback, back, yeah. I, want, I want Gilmore. I think Gilmore yeah. played his defense. Mm -hmm. He's, he's going to be on the blocks. Go ahead and go get him. Go yep. get bring him in. Leadership is going to go through the roof. Yep. That's if you're not bringing back Fuller. Now, I'm, yep. a, I'm a big fan of Fuller. So, yep. hey, if you're going to bring back Fuller, then we got that leadership again. Yep. But just from a guy who knows his offense, I mean, knows his defense well, yep. the, you know, the coaching staff, both Witt and, and your man um, Quinn, Quinn yep. knows what they're going to get out of him yep. and what he's going to do to that room. I would bring a guy like Gilmore in without even thinking about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Bring him in. He just makes your room that much better. And have, then you have a couple of guys who I think that's going to yeah. you know, benefit Develop of, of having that guy. So I, I want to make sure that while I got this young quarterback, my defense is stout mm -hmm. so they can carry us through some tight games and mm -hmm. some losses. And, and for me to do that, I need to go get plug and play guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I wouldn't be afraid to offer Brian Burns to see where he's at. I think he's a legit pass rusher who just yeah. starting to scratch the surface. Yeah. McQueen and White will be like, I might want to get to him before I get the pass rusher. That's how bad I want really? that middle linebacker. Yeah. Like, I think the middle linebacker, look at the teams that were the last pro team in the playoffs. They all had great middle linebackers. Mm -hmm. like, it, it, like, they all have great middle linebackers, but nobody want to get a middle linebacker the props yeah. that he used to get. Yeah. So McQueen and Devin White are the guys I'm trying to get. And now I can get Brian Burns. I got me at least one pass rusher with those two big boys in the middle. Yeah. Solidified my D-line right there. Probably draft I the solidified my, off of my linebackers when I got McQueen and I set him next to Jamie Davis. Solidified. Now, I still got my first round pick from last year. I still got St. Jude Hopefully, I still got Cam Curl. Now you talking about adding them, delect them delectables, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. veterans to a mm -hmm. defensive backfield, and uh, and all you know. Now we got a defense. Yeah, yeah. And so just to give you some numbers, that that defensive end Burns deal is probably about twenty million dollars. Mm -hmm. The linebacker Queen is probably fifteen million. Yeah, safety is probably fifteen corners so we're getting a little pricey there on that side of the football yeah because think about it that's about 60 million bucks and you remember yeah. what i did in the draft early i drafted what offense yeah i drafted mm -hmm. tight end that's tackle a good point. quarterback yeah. mm -hmm. and that's the uh, what's that the the uh, ticket of the draft podcast yeah, yes yes and it's coming out on friday so yeah, fred yeah. has some good insight there um all right so this segment, which is called Love Letters, is presented by Northwest Federal Credit Union, Love. the official credit union of the Washington Commanders. Stop searching, go Northwest, check out nwfcu.org slash Washington to see how easy it is to join and how Northwest can help make your money work for you. Stop by a branch or visit nwfcu.org slash Washington today. Okay, so this is Love Letters, guys, and it's Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. We haven't been very romantic. We yeah. talked a little bit about, you know, how we money, Valentine's which is not Day. a romantic thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Talked about the Super Bowl. Saint talked about getting Day. snubbed, which I guess is kind of a romantic thing, Put right? My yeah, I will. Put my shades on yeah, and read yeah, yeah. my <laughs> mm. So this is a love letter to anybody. Yes. Right? Yes. I, I'm going to do my love letter to the fans. Okay. All right. First of all, I guess, he, I guess he, she read my love letter already. Right? <laughs> I just want to say, fans, thank you all for being with us through the dark times. And me and Santana had a lot to do with those times. <laughs> so did Logan. And y'all were still there. I, I remember going to FedEx and it was still crunk, no yeah. matter what it was. Crunk. That's we was 0 and 6. It didn't matter. Y'all showed up. And this what love, the true test of love is what are you going to do when things are not going good? But this is what I want y'all to do, fan. I want y'all to break y'all love with the past because it's all about the new in the future now. With new ownership, new head coach, we're about mm. to have a new quarterback, new, 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 new. So don't bring that bad energy. 
Don't bring mm-hmm. that cloud from years ago. Don't bring that cloud from old football teams. Don't bring none of that. Let's turn this page and let's make this relationship better. It's finally time for us to be the couple that everybody looking at. Uh, it's about time for us to be chilling and everybody want to be Trav and Tay Tay. We need to be that. Uh, we need to be that. So all I'm saying, fam, I love you. There we go. That's very nice. I like that, Fred. <laughs> Fred probably does pretty good on Valentine's Day. <laughs> Mine's going to be so so short and sweet. Mm-hmm. It's going to get right to the point. Mm-hmm. This is for the fans, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an R&B intro. <laughs> Give it to them. Roses are red. <laughs> Violins are blue. Mm-hmm. Dear fans, y'all so so much love for 89. Guess what? 89 loves you, too. Oh! oh! Oh. All right. Roses are blue and we used to be named Red. <laughs> My name Fred. <laughs> that was good. Thanks, Fred. Um, so you guys are the fans. Obviously, we're very grateful to the fans yeah, of this show specifically, and we love you guys very much, all the support you give. Yeah. But I'm gonna say my love letter to you guys. Mm. Right? Oh, well, thank you. It man. is so fun doing this show with you guys every single week. And Fred, Fred, you're always busting my balls, but I love it. It makes me <laughs> laugh. And Tana, you have taught me how to be cool. And I think about those shoes. I wore those shoes out the other day you bought me. Yeah. It's almost like, man, you got some swag, dude. <laughs> and I was like, I it's because of these guys. Pop your yeah. collar, so, man. We, didn't, we got you jaywalking yeah. at the night. <laughs> We got you all over the place. And so right I'm, I'm turning into a new man hanging out with you guys, and I appreciate about, that. So the thank next you thing we're going to do, now that we got your shoes, we got to change your clothes. <laughs> like, we're going to change your clothes. Now, red is good on Valentine's <laughs> Day, but we're going we're gonna to have to take you shopping one day. Maybe in yeah, Food Line or Giant or something. <laughs> <Food line. laughs> I'm about to uh, say food line of yeah. giant. I shop at Wegmans. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we, we in here looking for shirts. <laughs> do, they got, do they got any shirts in Wegmans? <laughs> no, I'm missing. That's so funny. All right, well, I think that's going to do it for today's show. Thanks so much for joining, and uh, like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. We are brought to you by Bet365. At Bet365, we don't do ordinary. We believe that every sport should be epic. That's why we offer an in-game experience which covers over 78 sports and over 780,000 live streams to 90 million customers worldwide. Our online betting brand is powered by a world-class proprietary product and over 7,000 employees across the globe. Whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365, the official sporting betting partner of your Washington Commanders. Must be 21 plus and physically located in Virginia. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-GAMBLER.